going on? Is the city the war is spreading through the whole the whole city. Enemy of the state. Are you sure about and the rumors are spreading too. Hey! You got a radio in here? Quick! Turn it on to Radio Capital! Hurry! The public news station? Yeah! You aren't gonna believe what's going on! There's never anything good on that station. Just turn it on! Before the military shuts down the broadcast! Come on! Do I understand you correctly, Mrs. Bradley? The Mrs. Oh, Bradley. Mrs. Bradley interview. That's right. Our own military. They attempted to have me killed. That was a huge mistake. Episode 53, Flame of Vengeance. Fuhrer Bradley went east to preside over a military exercise and is yet to return to Central. That's correct. So then, it would seem that an official took advantage of his absence in order to stage a coup. That I do not know. Is that really Mrs. Bradley? Wow, this somehow played right into their hands. Is my understanding correct that Roy actually foresaw this? Because there was that moment where he said something about how he's sad that he's right. If he could see that far ahead, man, that is some chess game. So what's next? Now he can position himself as the one who's fighting against the coup, even though he is the coup? That's some very deliberately planned optics. I imagine you must be relieved that your son is traveling with his father. I haven't been able to contact my son. If you only knew. I sure hope little Salim's all right. Little Salim. A coup d'etat? Sure They're fools if they think they can run this country without Bradley. If, if Colonel Mustang hadn't saved me, I'm sure they would have killed we still haven't even told her that Fear Bradley is missing. But that's when. There's something we haven't told Mrs. Bradley yet, but she needs to hear it. On air, the on Fuhrer live was broadcast. Returning to Central, but his train was blown up. I'm sorry, but we have yet to find him. He's all right though. Mrs. And Bradley. How is he going to feel about all this, Bradley, still when he returns? Roy said that, right? Roy was like, I don't want to tell her because I don't want to see her faint. She actually fainted. What about Bradley, though? Because, I mean, he's going to see right through this. He knows what's going on. But they did try to kill his wife, so that puts him in a really weird place. If you're Bradley, where do you fall? Well, on some level, it's like, who cares even? Because from father's point of view, this whole country is about to get wiped out anyway. What does the infrastructure matter? This whole thing with Roy, it just assumes that they can stop father. And there will actually be a country to rule. We know for a fact. Someone's attempting to overthrow the government. Yeah, someone really is. They've taken the whole studio hostage. We're sitting here with guns pointed at our heads. We're lucky that we're still alive. The only reason they haven't shot any of us is because we're following their orders. Put Mustang on the phone! He's not there. He's fighting zombies. <laughs> no! Don't shoot me outside! Give this guy an Oscar. You should win an award. Yeah, that's what I said. So Colonel Mustang isn't behind the uprising? Um. Those of us giving our support to Colonel Mustang. We <sighs> may be few in number, that but that voice. won't stop us from protecting the legacy of the Fuhrer. We'll do everything we can to stop these traitors. In he the still doesn't know. Government. Someone's got to tell him. There you go. Finally. You sounded like a pro. And that last bit about justice? Nice touch. Well, of course. Everyone's willing to fight for justice. So I said it. That's right. And in this war, it belongs to us. It's funny to see the different ways people approach making changes. I think it was Miles who was talking about changing things from the inside. But you have characters who, like, will not break their ideals, right? Who will do what they think is right, no matter the personal cost, even if they risk failure. Then you have people who see a justified goal or aim, and they're perfectly willing to use the same tactics, right? Like, this is politicking. I mean, this is pretty devious politicking. It just so happens that as a viewer, I like their goals and I trust them to do the right thing. But like, they're definitely playing the same game. They are manipulating the feelings of humans, which is kind of weird. They're doing the homunculus thing, but it's so hard to resist those incentives because like Ross said, there are things that just work, you know, and like, I understand the temptation. How do you leave those things on the table? It does seem like the best way to get people riled up for your cause is to make them feel good about themselves or make them feel like whatever it is, it's for justice or for goodness or something like that. But what's sort of dangerous about that, at least as it pertains to real life, is you don't actually have to be good or just to create the optics that you are good or just. Pretty much anybody can spin. You know, spin is one of the most powerful tools. Just get people emotional. Get people emotional either that what they're doing is right and that they are good people by supporting or 
the opposite get people to hate your opposition and see them as evil. I think like in an ideal situation, which this is certainly not, we would all be a little bit more discerning of that tactic and the incentive would be lost to manipulate people that way. So for me, Roy is like, he's good, but he's not a pure good. He's a means justify the ends kind of person. Although I think he does have like a support level of values. Like he does take really good care of people in his world, in his circle. Mustangs men say that they're trying to prevent an uprising. Are you sure he's not behind it? Smart guy. Why would they keep all of us in the dark about such a thing? The military must be staging a coup d'etat. But who's behind it? If they storm the radio station and kill Mrs. Bradley, then we'll know it's the senior staff. Salim, but what about little Salim? <laughs> little Salim. Stop with the little Salim business. I just hope he's safe. He's fine. Salim is fine. Don't worry. You know what this suggests to me, which is sort of weird, is that actually maybe the people of Amestris are happy, or they were happy. Because I didn't really have a strong impression of where they were at with the whole government thing before these couple of episodes. But if they are willing to be this riled up about it, if they do really care like this, but we didn't see that before, maybe they were just content with Bradley. And also we've heard people say the country would be lost without Bradley, which is really interesting. So like, they're doing a good job on some level. It's just that it's a facade. There's like a much greater lurking evil. Credit to the homunculi where it's due. I want a detailed rundown. Now go ahead. Oof, they're hey, all dead. What's happening? <sighs> sir, is everything okay? I mean, we aren't going to lose the main gate to them, are we, sir? Of course not! Ridiculous. That's impossible. They'd need a tank to breach the main gate. Guess what? Uh I could lend you a hand, full metal. Colonel? I thought you were out of spit, you liar. New friends everywhere you go. Is that Scar? Yes. A lot has happened. I can't help but think of the last time we were here, Lieutenant. As I recall, you were crying over me. Shame I don't get to see that softer side of you more often. You had your chance in the office and you said move out. Save your banter for later. Yeah, Kill yeah. these things. Hey, don't you dare give me orders. Just do it. Right. Just start shooting at these white guys. Shoot him in the head, please. Now, save your ammo. Bullets won't even slow him down. Not again. How else do we kill them? Fire. Monculi? No. You've killed before. They aren't healing themselves. But they're not dying either. They've got to be powered by philosopher stones. <laughs> Any day now, Roy, would be great. You know, when you're ready. Whoa, that's an elaborate fire pattern. Fire is super effective against Philosopher's Stones, I guess. They were the enemy. It had to be done. Wow, it's even torn up about killing zombies. That's sort of what I was saying, how different characters have different thoughts about things, different approaches to morality based on what their goals are. And that was a little moment of Ed and Roy sort of meeting. What does Roy care about the zombie lives? Oh, there you go. Welcome to the crew. I thought... I just wanted to... Forget it. Don't cry. <laughs> You're so rough on her. Who gets the pleasure of being first to die? You're Envy, right? Hmm. You're the homunculus who can change his appearance at will. Wow! You've heard of me! <gasps> oh, he killed Hughes. It's about to get personal. Flames of Vengeance! You do know that he helped reduce Ishval to a hell on Earth. I'm aware of that. What? What do you Your think about that, MB? Now? You guys are no fun at all. <sighs> what happened to trying to crush each other's windpipes? Look at the two of you. You obviously want to kill each other, so do it. This manipulation is kind of lacking. In your sick little game yeah. Anymore. Really? And what about your sick games? Don't kid yourself, Mustang. You know humans love to watch other people suffer while making fools of themselves. <laughs> that was a lot. That was a loaded sentence. I want you to tell me who killed Maze Hughes. <laughs> and I Here we go. Truth, homunculus. Then he's not gonna pull any punches. I'm sick of you, homunculi, giving me the runaround when I ask you this question. Tell me the truth. You already know. Out of you, you worthless scum. He has to know already. Tell Envy's me the shapeshifter. For his murder. 
I guess he just wants to hear it out loud. <laughs> Congratulations, Colonel Mustang. You finally hunted down your culprit. <laughs> Envy, man. You just killed yourself. <laughs> you should see your face! Oh, you're not gonna believe this! But that was the same look on you's face when I shot him! Speaking of digging your own grave... You were stupid enough to confess. Yeah. And even more stupid to boast. Everything you've said is fuel on your funeral pyre. So then, I think I'll begin... By burning out your tongue! Full Metal Alchemist. Is Envy gonna die in the same room as Lust? It's kind of interesting how quickly the tongue can be rendered to a bubbling grease. It's surprising how easy it burns, isn't it? Lieutenant, you really think the two of you Edward, can- Edward, just go. We can handle this one. Are you sure? The lieutenant said go, Elric. <laughs> You've got more important matters to deal with. He's right, Ed. Yeah. Now let's go. <laughs> Where I can handle this. Damn it. The colonel's gonna be fine. Yeah. You saw that back there. This won't even be a challenge for him. It'll be a challenge, That's not but exactly what I'm worried about. Huh? Then what's the problem? What is he worried about? Mustang going nuts? This room. This room is so important for the show. So many things happen in here. You've been rather dogged in your pursuit of Yu's killer. You're a true friend to the very end! Ah! Dinosaur time. I'm not exactly capable of treading lightly in this body. So you better give it all. Damn you! Ah! Roy's making it look easy. Did you think that size would increase your chance of winning? You idiot. Stand up, monster! Go on and regenerate yourself. You'll suffer a thousand deaths before I'm done. Yeah, Roy's enjoying this. He could probably How just finish him off, but... He's the one who incinerated lust today. Yeah, in this very room. <laughs> Alright, well, Envy avoided dying in the same room, at least. You coward! Colonel! You wait here, Lieutenant! I'm going to take care of him myself! Wait there for what? There's a strong mass of rancid chi ahead. Rancid chi. Rancid chi. Yeah. Scar, I Something's weighing on him. You. Yeah. It's about the flame, Alchemist. Let it all out. What's the issue? It wasn't that long ago that I was a monster. I understand the burning desire for revenge all too well. The way he's headed, he will destroy himself in the flames of hatred. And it's doubtful that he will ever recover. This is really interesting. Roy definitely does have a dark side. And even though I didn't really think that much of it, because I sort of just trusted that, you know, the heroes will be heroes, there is a danger even in him becoming Fuhrer. He says he wants to bring reforms, and he says he wants to hold himself accountable, but just thinking about it in terms of human nature, there's a huge temptation there. And he's definitely not the purest person, as I've said a few times. He does seem to have the capacity to get lost in all this. But I'm not sure what Ed wants. What do you do in this situation? Do you stop Mustang from fighting Envy? Maybe you stop him from torturing Envy, boiling out the eyes and the tongue and what have you. Because it seems like Roy's not even going for the kill, he's just going for fun. I think Roy himself acknowledges the danger. He asks Riza to shoot him in the back if he ever gets out of line. He makes that promise to Ed and Ed holds him accountable and also holds his money. So all that's playing into something. And so I just wonder what Ed's role will be in all this. Whatever it is, it feels good to have things turned around like that because Roy, even in his own dark way, took Ed in. So even though they fight, Roy is something to Ed. So I like Ed thinking about him like that. Come out now. Otherwise, I'm going to ignite your bone marrow. Careful. Roy, what's up? No, this time I got it. Human. He won't kill his friend. That was kind of obvious, though. I don't feel good about that one. Colonel, I'm sorry, but I can't wait. Oh, no. I wonder if he asked Riza to stay behind so she doesn't see what he's doing. You're not getting away. Yeah, he's in deep now. <laughs> oh no! Oh no, 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 no. If he sees Riza, he might think it's Envy in disguise. So she's in a lot of danger. That seems to be what's going to happen because that would be poetic justice in some sense for his rage. And that would be an actual real danger, tangible danger for him right now in this state. 
the only hope for this situation is Ed, I think. Ed's gotta... He's not gonna stop. I told you to stay behind the Whoa. Tent. That's a relief. But I couldn't just sit there, sir. Damn, I thought she was gonna get scorched for sure. But is this envy? I'm so lost. Who knows? Damn, I'm on edge right now. No! Damn it. Can't sleep on Envy. Never count him out. Envy has been on the brink of death so many times, he just won't die. You can't say he doesn't have his moments. And I'm so pissed, I keep getting caught by it. Even after I didn't get caught by the obvious one, where it wasn't the, you know, the soldier. In the forefront of my mind, I'm thinking about how I've never had a really good opportunity where I saw through Envy's disguises. Right after that, I got caught. So it's just not to be. I'm never gonna have that moment where I, I see through it. Oh well. I'm an easily manipulated human being. What can I say? This episode overall is really intriguing to me because there's so many things that are maybe happening. It's like, it's very rich because I'm on Roy's side. I want his plans to succeed. But for me, there's something kind of bizarre about his methods and there's something not quite wholesome, not quite pure. There's an undercurrent of darkness for me in his actions. And so for me, I'm thinking like, that's just me being idealistic. But then it goes more directly into a darkness for him, which is Ed worrying about him, worrying about him losing his sanity. And so I really don't know how it's gonna go, or I don't know how heavily that's gonna be explored. But just me as a viewer, there's an element of dread for me in Roy, wondering how this will play out, even before he was, you know, held at gunpoint by Envy. Like, it's so bad that even Scar notices it. When Scar is worried about someone's desire for revenge, you know you may have gone too far. So that's all for episode 53. I'll see you guys next time when we find out, hopefully, what happened at the end of that cliffhanger.